Hi, I'm Rachel from Girl Director and welcome to this week's series of Women's Video Revolution. Today, our special guest is the gorgeous, beautiful Rachel Blake. Rachel has been acting for 20 years and she's been in some incredible movies and TV series in Australia and overseas and she's worked with some of the biggest names out there in the industry. So I'm so happy and, and excited to be presenting this interview because I know she's got so much wisdom to share with you in your video journey. Welcome Rachel Blake to the Women's Video Revolution. So, Thank so you. cool to have you here with us and share your Thank wisdom you. and your knowledge and, and your experience with everybody watching. So I'd love to, for the people that don't know you because you've had a phenomenal career in acting. So just share some of the people and, and movies that you've been in. Yeah. Um, well, I've worked, I work predominantly in Australia and I've been working overseas as well. I was based in London for a long time and for seven years. Um, I worked with, I shot a film called Perfect Strangers where I worked with Sam Neill, who was amazing. Um, I shot a television series where I uh, worked with Ian McKellen, who was my husband. Um, I shot another film in London where I worked with Robert Carlyle. I shot an Australian film here called Antana where I worked with Anthony Lapali and Barbara Hershey. It's the first time I, I felt like I met a huge star, you know, sort of panicked a bit. Um, How was that? Doing that, it was amazing. I, I, when I first met Barbara Hershey, it was in a, a caravan on set. And I remember meeting her. I was cleaning my teeth at the time, which you do, you know, in those makeup trailers. And I was so nervous about shaking her hand. I squeezed toothpaste all over myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. She, and she, I'm sure she didn't mind. She didn't even notice. It was me afterwards going, oh, my God, how embarrassing. Yeah. And so what, what, what's one of the films you've been working on recently? I just wrapped a film in Brussels, which was a French film, a French-English-speaking uh, uh, film. Um, that was ama it was an amazing opportunity, you know, I, I, the character I played died, so I lost two stone and I shaved all my hair off. It's actually now just gotten long. After a year, I've just been sort of concentrating on growing it back. And I, I got to learn French for it. Um, and it took me about six months to get ready. And then I went over there and I, I shot it with, in a French environment, just sort of managing myself to be effective in a situation that I, I sort of, I suppose I didn't really know that I could do, you know, I just sort of kept attacking it with work and kept stepping over my concerns. And, you know, I, it, it screened in Montreal in competition in Canada. And I was terrified that, that the French were going to listen to me speaking French and, and sort of think I was awful, you know. I, I was really worried about that. I just thought they're going to hear me because their, their language is so beautiful. And they're going to tell I can't speak it, but it went really well, and I won Best Actress. So I felt like I don't know. You went with your instincts and just kept going. And what was the thing? Did you just keep pushing through every day? Did you keep telling yourself it's okay? It's okay. I can do this. Or how did you um, prepare for that? I just I, no. I don't think I never said I can do it. I just thought the result will be from my actions. So so no matter how much I thought I can't do it, so long as I kept working and kept listening and kept asking people who knew more than me, I knew it would be all right. I thought the danger is when I panic is that I clam up and I don't talk. And I thought that will kill it. That will kill the role and it will uh, kill the experience. So I just kept talking and I just kept going, here's that thing again where I go, I can't do it, I can't do it. You know, here it is again and now I'm going to go do some work. Yeah. Yeah. That's really powerful advice in any situation, I think. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Just keeping in action and being surrounded by people that are more experienced that you keep stepping through, yeah. it, that's yeah. so valuable. Yeah. And do you know what else I, I think is good? Is to sort of embarrass yourself as quickly as possible. Like get it out of the way. Like I used to just try and get the humiliating bit where I would stumble through the French out of the way as quickly in the morning as I could and then it was all sort of uphill or something. I felt like... Great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's really cool advice. That's what they say acting is, you know. It's, it's taking all your clothes off and turning around very, very slowly. Crowded room. Really? Yeah. 
you know, one of the most embarrassing moments, I met Richard Branson and he was getting dressed and he had his pants down that I was going to pitch. I didn't care. It was like I was going in there and he has pants down. And it was like, oh, my God, I don't care. I'm still going to say what I have to say because I'm, wow, I'm going to freak out. Wow, really? <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, God, did you say, oh, God, I'm sorry, you just went in and pitched? <laughs> I, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing was he did say at the end, like, Thank you. Tell your friend you did an amazing job. <laughs> I just thought, wow. for him to even say that, what an amazing person. Because <laughs> wow. I was shaking and I was red and I was like, because I got told, no, you're not going to have time to see him. But I thought, no, I'm still going to do it. <laughs> see, that's, that's what I love about people like that, though. I reckon he would have got, that took a lot of bollocks for you to do that, and he would have got it cost you something to, to come over to him. To di you know, like the courage in that. You go, okay, if that girl's got that sort of bollocks, what's she like to work with? That's what I would think. How is it when you, when you are developing for a role, I mean, to, to cut all your hair off, to lose weight, and I remember you telling us before that you were also trimming up for a new role that you have. How do you switch from you to the character? Yeah, I don't know that it is a switch. Or I, I suppose maybe that's how it looks from the outside. I think I just work out a plan to get what I need to get. So for this next role, I need to be fit, extremely fit. And the character needs to be very strong. And I thought fitness is a great context to stand in because you have to deal with yourself all the time. You think, I can't do intervals. I don't want to do intervals to push through pain barriers. I just thought it was a great way of building a character from the ground up. Because if I do it that way, if I work on the detail, the big picture looks after itself. Yeah. 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 So many wise words. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what, what's one of the most challenging roles that you've had? Was that, that the French film was the most challenging role? Yeah, it? yeah it, it was really, it, I felt like all of my experience culminated on that job because there was so many concerns I had. I mean, I was cast as the lead in a French film and I don't speak French. So what I couldn't work out when I was learning the French with a tutor was who was nuts. Was it me for taking the role or the director for casting me? Like I, I, I literally would think I'd get up at two o'clock in the morning and I think this is insane. I'm doing something I don't know that you can do. And I, I used to get on Google and go, who's done this? Who's learned a language for a film? And actually, there's a long tradition of people doing it. And once I saw that it can be done, it's just a matter of your actions but then, of course, there's that little voice that goes, you can't do it. No? I just thought, so it was that, stepping over it, stepping over it, stepping over it, and making sure it was my actions and not my concerns, really. Is there a role out there that you'd love to play? Is there a, some kind of film or a character or someone that you go, I just want to do that one day. That's the kind of character that I'd love to play. Yeah, do you know, it's funny that, that there is something I'd love to do. I would love to do a character that's a little bit more chilled, a little bit more laid back, and humorous like I do a lot of really heavy drama and I love doing that don't get me wrong it's something that I really enjoy but I'd love to do something like I've, I've been watching a, a an HBO show called Newsroom and it's really smart I love that Isn't yeah that great? I love that too yeah. yeah that Emily Mortimer role Mackenzie she's just a great strong woman and but she's got that kind of softness and vulnerability like she's so likable and it's so true of what happens in a newsroom too. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love the way they balance the personal life with the importance of the work and the way the personal life often overtakes, but it's never as important as getting the news out. Like that seems a very authentic way to show a business to me, you know. You see a lot of videos with YouTube and things like that. And what are you noticing out there in the, in the, on the internet with business owners that are getting up there and, and having a go for the first time on camera? What are you noticing is happening out there? Um, well, it's something that I see a lot generally um, with people in front of the camera, with in front, being in front of cameras, either being interviewed or, or delivering messages down the barrel. And it's, I think there's a fundamental problem that everyone has, and it's, I, I think it's quite simple to solve, in that it's just people not having their mind on something other than themselves. So, so when they're talking, the concern is how they're looking um, the way they're sounding rather than what they're doing uh, to people out there. That, there's, that often I think what's missing is a connection. And, and actually, you know, in acting, it's the one thing that we're always looking for. It's the one 
it's the one thing you have to do is connect. You either connect to the person you're talking to or you connect through the camera. And, so, and, and that's the thing that miss, is missing. And it's fundamental. It has to be there. And what tips can you suggest? Is there one tip that you can suggest that actually helps you to connect through the camera? Yeah, um, there's a few actually. The, the first thing I would say is uh, something you must have that you must never go in front of a camera without having an intention. And, and what I mean by that is not, not an intention like I'm going to go and deliver my new business model or I've got this amazing product that's going to amaze people, you know, not that. The intention has to be something that you're doing to the listener that is under the words. So it's, it's, it's an idea of what is, it, what is the feeling that you want to leave with the people that you're talking to. So what do you want to get out of them? So you might package it like um, I'm going to get you to hold my hand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw you in. I'm going to light you up. I'm going to show you the way. So it's a lateral concept that sits beside the content. And, and what it does is, is it, it, it takes the parameters of what you're doing and, and it, 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 allows, it allows you to get your mind off yourself and onto somebody else. And what that leads to is connection. It leads you to contacting someone. So I find speaking, especially to business women, we're talking to women all the time about being really clear and imagining that person they're speaking to when you t take your mind away from yourself mm. and onto that person that needs to hear your message or your information. Um, yeah. So, yeah, very powerful. I, I, think that's, I think that's really true. But I'd say the one thing that I would add to that is you've got to know what you're doing to that person. What is it you want to do to them? You want to light them up. You, you want to show them the way. And then I would sit and think about that, about if it is your brother that you want to light up, like how would you do that? And talk it out with them as though they're there before you shoot and then come on camera and then shoot it. So that person is alive for you. And, and in my mind, I would also have how you know when they're going to feel like that. How, what would your brother do when he's lit up? Would he get up and hug you? Would he be really specific? Because the more specific you can be, the less work you have to do, the, the more it can just flow, you know. And what about voiceovers? Because voiceovers are one of those things that I know you've got a lot of experience with, with doing documentaries and, and things like that. What about the voice? What do you find that might help somebody to do voiceovers when they're doing business videos with a voice? Okay. Well, I would say the first thing you've got to do is get used to the sound of your voice. That most people, when they hear their voice, they don't like it. It's a bit like first time you see yourself on camera. Um, it, can, it can be problematic. So I would say a good thing to do is I've got an app on my phone um, that, I, that I use to record myself and do submissions for documentaries and whatever. It's, it's about $6 or something. And it's got a good little, uh, all it does is tape you. And it, it allows you to email those, those uh, finished whatever it is you're recording up to about 20 megabyte or something like that so they're quite it's about three minutes long and what in what that'll enable you to do is it'll enable you to hear what your voice sounds like how far you get from the mic to pick up say a resonance or slightly change the quality of your voice um i'd say something like that's a really good idea i would say start practicing being at home and reading aloud because often when people start reading aloud and doing a narration their mind goes on to how they sound rather than what they're saying and then the mistakes start happening so Get used to reading aloud as well. And then there's other things you can do, like you can circle particular words you want to hit. You can use inflection to show things. So, so if the line is, um, he went over there, and you want to hit there, then just simply lift it up. He went over there. So, so things like that. And just be, try to be a bit clearer with your pronunciation. And These are all things you can practice at home on an app like iTalk, and then listen to it and see what you think. You know? And what about visualization techniques with voice if you're imagining your voice hitting a certain place or uh, just visualization techniques in, in your own body? Does that come into play at all? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's a, it's a great tool to use because you can, it's amazing how if you imagine where your voice is, you can change the quality of it. So if I start thinking about my voice as being quite nasal, I can push it up there and make it nasal. If I start thinking of my voice as being very open-throated, I can do that too. So I think that's another good tool to use with an application like iTalk. 
you know, just visualize your voice moving around and see what sounds nice. Because I think people want to listen to something that sounds pleasant. And so if there are unpleasant things in your voice or things that come out under stress in your voice, then maybe there's, there's a way for you to work out if there's a better visualization you can do that could have you place that in a way that makes it just a little bit more mellifluous or something, yeah. Has your voice changed over the years? Have you noticed a change in your voice? Yeah, I have actually, because I, when I first started acting, I was quite conscious of the fact that my voice was quite deep, and I thought it was a little masculine. And so I used to, I used to quite sort of hold it a little bit higher and talk like that. And I didn't even know I was doing it until I went into class one day and suddenly this voice came out. <laughs> I, went, I love your voice. Uh, oh, that's great. Oh, thank you. Well, I do Beautiful. Well, I for a long time. And so what I've noticed now is I'm sort of like, you know what, that's the way I sound. And, and I, I think to a certain extent, if there is a female equivalent, my ball's are dropping because it seems to be getting lower. I don't know. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my voice is getting lower. So Can you sing as well? I can sing, but I've only got a range of about four notes. Okay. <laughs> so I know. So have you done any theatre work as well as as acting on screen? Uh, I did a little bit. I studied at NIDA, which is all theatre, and then I did one uh, cabaret lineup job here, and then I did a theatre show in London. Um, but really, all of my work is TV and film. That's what I do because I love cameras. I just love it. So did you always know that you wanted to, to act on the screen? Did you know from a young age, right, this is what I want to do and that's it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so where do you see yourself in, with the internet and video the way it is and YouTube getting bigger and Netflix? Where do you see the future of acting? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's, it seems... To, I mean, there's all sorts of concerns I have around it that, that our delivery systems for entertainment are getting wider, that, you know, you can get it on your phone, your TV, your DVD, or whatever. But the stories we are telling are, are getting somewhat narrower. I find that an interesting contradiction. But um, I don't know. I think television is probably going to take over from cinema. I think on demand is going to take over. I think, it's, I think people are going to be uh, dominating what's in the entertainment landscape from their lounge room a lot more. I think there's going to be a lot less huge events at cinemas because people want what they want now without having to go out and organize a babysitter and I can totally understand that. And, and in a way that's great because I think it opens up um, a huge opportunity for, for people for all over the world to be part of entertainment, to be part of an online presence. And, and why not? Why not have um, a socializing like this that exists online, I, I, you know, it's good. Do you want to direct your own things? Do you see yourself writing and directing in the future your own content? Yeah, I do, actually. I, I write now and I also have students that I teach and uh, at the moment I'm working with intermediate level students and next year I'm going to work with beginners and it's all really to see how quickly can I teach someone to get out of themselves and do good work. Do you work with acting students, so people that want to do acting on the screen? Is that the kind of students that, yeah. that you work yeah. with? Yeah. Yeah, I'm working with acting students um, who, who want to work on screen and who want to find a, a naturalism um, on screen that doesn't sound too scripted. Okay. Yeah. And how long does it generally take? Have you found, a, a, you know, your methodology, how long it normally takes? Not long at all. I reckon you can take someone from not being able to act to being brilliant in probably a week. A week? Yeah. Wow, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But they need to be completely open to a process and they need to jump in boots and all and you have to be prepared to sort of um, be courageous and unzip yourself emotionally. Um, but yeah, I don't believe in this whole thing. I don't believe it takes three years. I don't believe people are born actors. I don't think talent is what it's all about. I think persistence and perseverance has a lot more to do with um, being efficient and, and good at, at acting or being on camera than anything else. Because so long as you can step outside of your mind and see what's missing or what's not working, what can't you do? Yeah, absolutely. I completely 100% agree with you. I love that. It is like the Matrix really, isn't it? <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Well, in the world that you can, it's really about your perception and what you see and once you take that, that next stage, you can do anything, you can leap over things if you really want to. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
So what other things do you see out there that, you know, from your wisdom that you might be able to share with, with business owners that are starting to, to go on video and they're starting to do things? Is there anything you can think of that will be really helpful for them? Yeah, I can actually. Um, something, and this sounds contradictory, you've got to give up the idea, you've got to authentically give up the idea that this time when you're on camera or on screen or acting or whatever is going to do anything for you, that it's going to change your life. You have to give up that thought because if you go on camera thinking this is the one I'm going to win an Oscar for or this is the, this is the time when everyone's going to get my brilliance or whatever it is, it immediately stresses you. It immediately puts parameters on the way you're allowed to communicate. It makes you think of a way it's supposed to look um, and it stops you authentically expressing yourself. So, so I would say you have to have an intention. You have to give up the idea that it's going to change your life such that it becomes significant. I'd say it's the difference between having something matter to you and having something be significant. I'd say you've got to do that. And I'd say the third thing you've got to do is really know your stuff. Know it backwards. Know it inside out, backwards and sides and whatever. Because then that leads to an ease. All of these ways of thinking on camera, are all they're about is about giving yourself an ease. That's it. Because if you can have an ease, you can connect. And if you can connect, people will listen. And if people will listen, then isn't that the whole point? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for this exclusive interview because what you're saying there is it's just so valuable, the information you've shared and really, really appreciate it, sharing it with our audience. So for those of you who do want to step into the acting arena, I guess you'd say, <laughs> and like some coaching from Rachel and some, some teaching from Rachel, you can contact us and we'll put you in touch with Rachel. So for those of you who are interested, Rachel does take one-on-one. -on -one. So just share with us what, what kind of uh, people are you looking for to teach? Um, well, I, I really, what I do is I predominantly teach ease in front of the camera. Like that's that's really what acting is. The only difference between acting and just and and someone say delivering a product is the fact of how scripted it is. But I would argue that if if you have a product, then it's probably worth you scripting it anyway, and and learning it and developing an ease with that. So that's that's all I do is I just get it so simple, as simple as possible, just to get people ha to have an ease and get their minds off themselves. And, and at the moment, it's through TV and, and screen acting. So it's anyone who wants that, really, is what I would be, um, what I think I could benefit, be of value. Yeah. I think the more that people, you know, with periscoping uh, and the social media and, and the live cameras being more and more accessible, I think it's a very valuable tool for anybody to learn these days because... So, so many people freeze up when the camera's on. I know yeah. I was one of them. <laughs> oh, <wait laughs> anytime, that little, anytime that little red light was on, it was like, oh, my God, I'd pull the weirdest faces. So I know. I know how when I stepped through that fear and then had something with the elephants I wanted to make a difference with, the whole fear stopped because, like you're saying, the intention was there to make a difference. It wasn't about me. It was stepping through that. And I think it's a great skill to learn for anybody, really, to help them in their next yeah. stage in their business and presenting what they do and making more of a difference. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it is, it is something, like you say, as soon as you've found something to have your mind on that wasn't yourself, suddenly what's available then is what's there, is, is the content. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, per that's a perfect example. Yeah. Well, thank you. Is there any last words that you'd like to share at all? Oh, no, I, I, suppose, I suppose it's just a matter of just saying, you know, to all those people out there who are getting on camera, I get it. I know how hard it is and I know how confronting it is. And, but, you know, that thing you step over, when you step over those fears and concerns, what's on the other side of that is the life you want rather than a life being governed by fears. And, and those thoughts come up all the time in life. So it's just a matter of, are you going to have the fear and do it anyway? Or are you going to have the fear and stay home? You know, I, I, I sort of go, just, just do it. Go for it. Try it. Why not? We've got to lose. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah. La fantastic. So thank you so much for joining us. I know I could spend another two hours listening to all the things you've done and the amazing people you've worked with and the films and experiences that you've got. There's just so much wisdom and knowledge there. It's, yeah, really, really appreciate you being with us today. Oh, thank you. It's been my absolute pleasure.